before we start summarizing the week's data, I'd like to just throw some lessons out there in epidemiology, because I, I do think it's important for the public to understand some of the issues. And I've noticed in social media the last couple of days, a lot of people are talking about death rates or mortality rates. Um, and I thought I'd just briefly discuss what that is and how is it or how is it not important at this point when it comes to COVID. So a death or mortality rate is simply the number of deaths from a certain disease or just total deaths divided by the population size. In this case, as of today, this is the number of people in the United States who have died. This is the population of the United States. And you could say that the mortality rate from COVID is 0.02%. Now, does that really mean anything? And it doesn't right now. And I'd like to explain why. First of all, the number of cases in the United States is still growing, okay? This isn't the final number of deaths. It's, and they're based, this is of the people who have COVID, right? Um, and only 1.4% of the US population has had COVID at this point. And I, I got that 1.4% by dividing the number of cases in the US, this 4.6 million, divided by the population size of the United States. So 1.4% of the population has had COVID. Now, many of these are people who currently have COVID and may still die. So they haven't necessarily recovered yet. If you look at the current case fatality rate, and you remember last week we talked about what a case fatality rate is on this summary, but it's essentially what percent of the people who have the disease actually die. And in the United States, that case fatality rate is 3.4% right now. Well, if you look at the U.S. and you say, what if 2% of the U.S. population gets COVID? And again, right now it's at 1.4%. That's going to be 6,564,000 cases of COVID. And you're going to see 223,000 deaths. And that's just with 2% of the population developing this disease. If half the people end up getting it, if no one wears masks and no one cares about whether or not this disease is spread, 164 million people will develop COVID and there will be 5,579,000 deaths. So you can see that it is a big issue. Um, this mortality rate that might make sense if you're, when you're done and said when COVID's gone and is no longer, people are no longer developing it, you can say this number died who had out of the total population. But right now we're talking about such a small percent of the population that's actually had it. And you can see that we do not want half of the population getting sick with this disease because we'll have five, and a half million deaths in this country from um, COVID. And if this is the slide from last week, um, and people can look at that video that we did with Chelsea, and this is the case fatality rate by age. And it, this is the South Dakota rate, the, the, the ones in the yellow, so 14.4% of people 70 years of age or older who get COVID will die from COVID. And that goes down with age. Less than a half a percent of 30 year olds who get COVID are gonna die. But if you look at the actual numbers, now this is going just to South Dakota, but this is gonna be about 23,000 or, but if you look at the age of the, South Dakota population, you can actually calculate the number of deaths. And this is assuming 
that 25% of the South Dakota population develops COVID. So not as bad as that 50% and not at the 1.4 US rate that we currently have. But you can see that if a quarter of the population in South Dakota gets this disease, we're gonna have over 4,000 deaths from it. Um, and the other thing, so that's kind of why I think people need to be careful on how they interpret mortality rates. And when you see mortality rates, what you really should be thinking more, what is the case fatality rate and what percent of the population has had the disease or can still get it to try to figure out the magnitude of whether it's a problem or not. The other thing I wanted to talk about today, and we've mentioned it a couple times, is the long-term effects of COVID. And in the past week, there have been two papers that have come out that are very interesting when it comes to this. One of them, both of these papers are from Germany. Um, the first study involved 100 individuals who recovered from COVID. Now these people, they weren't really sick. I mean, 33% of them were hospitalized. They're definitely very sick. But 18% of that 100, 18 of them, didn't even have symptoms of COVID. You know, they may have been a contact and tested and found to be positive, but they weren't showing any symptoms. 49% of them had moderate or minor symptoms. And then the other 23% um, did have more, more severe disease. So what this group is doing is they're following these individuals long-term to find out how the virus affected their heart function, okay? Because we know that the heart is one of the susceptible organs to COVID. It's not just the lungs. And so they performed cardiac tests three weeks to four months after these individuals recovered from COVID and then compared those to the results from healthy controls who have never had COVID. What they found was that in 78% of these people, there was still evidence of injury to the heart up to four months after they had been recovered from COVID, and that 60% of them still had some sort of infl cardiac inflammation or, or inflammation in the heart. And this was true even in the people who had no previous health conditions, but had developed COVID. So it is um, important to continue to follow these people. Maybe in a year they will all recover well, but you know it's not known at this time what the long-term impact of COVID is on heart um, function and disease status. Another study coming out of Germany, both of these are JAMA. So they're in the references to these articles are down at the bottom. The second study was an autopsy study. So these are people that died from COVID and they found evidence that the virus causing COVID, the SARS-2 virus, was actually had been replicating inside of the heart tissue. So the virus got into the heart muscle and then was replicating and forming new virus. So that, that's very unusual. But they also noted that the presence of the virus in the heart tissue didn't seem to be related to inflammation in the heart. They did see inflammation in heart muscle, but the two were not necessarily related. You know, it could be something different and they're looking into other things. So these are two new things that have come out just in the last week that I think are very interesting that are looking at long-term effects of having COVID earlier in life. 